Here in Studio One, I've added four different types of channels. In blue, I have a regular audio track. In green, I have an auxiliary channel. In orange, I have an effects channel. And in purple, I have a bus channel. Now, over the years in Studio One, the effects and bus channels have got so close in functionality that in many cases, they could be interchangeable. However, there's a big difference with bus channels and it's revealed right at the top here where it says, mix effects if we click on this in my case there's a selection of mix engine effects or plugins if you like that i can add here let's choose this one ctc1 you can see it appear there so what's the difference between these plugins added here and our regular inserts hi folks i'm mike and I hope you will. If you've simply messed around with mix engine effects in the past without reading the manual, who does that, or watched a tutorial, then I'm willing to bet you've probably misunderstood exactly how they work. And that's a bit of a shame because if you understand how they work and get the most out of them, they can really make a difference to your overall mix. So we're gonna be learning about that in this video today. But first of all, let's have a listen to one in action so we can hear the difference that it makes. In this example, I'm gonna be using a mix engine effect on my master bus. So it's gonna be affecting the whole mix. And you can see it added over here, it's called Brick Console. Now, if you try to add a mix engine effect by clicking on this little arrow here, you may find that this list looks a little bit different for you. One of the main reasons for that is because this one, Console Shaper, is the only one that comes built into Studio One Professional. Some of the others are there because they're a part of the Studio One Plus membership. So if you're a Studio One Plus member, you may also see some of these other plugins. And finally, I have a third party one here, Tape Multitrack. But even if you're just using the console shaper, all of the things that we're going to talk about, or most of the things we're going to talk about in this tutorial are still going to apply. So let's go ahead and open up Brick Console so that we can hear the difference it's making. And before I finally press play, I just want to say, if you're listening through your phone speaker, for example, you may not hear any difference. You really need to be listening through proper speakers or through headphones to hear the difference this is making. We're going to start off with it switched on. And when it's switched on, you can see a few of these orange or red lights are on here. When I switch it off, you'll see those disappear. So let's have a listen to this chorus and hear the difference between when it's on as it is at the moment and when I switch it off. And I guess Superman never really ever gave a damn about no The Daily Planet, all the people there, he just showing off. Cause his parents said, we'll love him more. Now, what I found with this is that it is kind of subtle, but I felt that a lot of the energy and just some of the, the lush sound of the mix just disappeared when I switched this off. The original mix is okay, it's fine, but really there's a little bit of extra sort of X factor added when we switch this on. We'll talk about some of the reasons for that a little bit later. But you may be wondering, okay, that's all very well, but why isn't this just a regular insert on the master bus? Well, there's quite a big difference between the way these plugins work and our regular plugins. In this example, I've got a whole bunch of drum tracks in green here, okay? Now the output of these tracks are all going to this bus. It's in red at the end here, so we can easily identify it. Now, if I go ahead and insert an effect on this bus, let's say go for this bus compressor here, then that effect is gonna be affecting the signal on that bus, the sum of all of those drum tracks going into the bus is gonna affect this compressor that I've inserted here, okay? Let's undo that and instead, let's go ahead and insert or add a mix engine effect. We can do this one here, console shaper. Now, when we add this in here, just like the compressor before, it does have an effect on the bus channel but it also individually affects 
all of the tracks that have their output going to that bus channel. So it's as if we had inserted this effect or this plugin into every single one of these drum tracks here. Now the easiest way to demonstrate this is to turn the drive all the way up here. Yeah, so we're going to be driving it really hard. It's going to be increasing the signal. And then I'm going to solo just this kick track here. Now for a moment, I'm going to bypass the console shaper, which we added to the bus here. So we're just going to turn it off for a moment and just have a listen and a look at that kick drum track. Now you can see that it's peaking at around about minus six decibels there. So let's go ahead and turn on the console shape and mix engine effect and see what's happening to that kick now. So you can see it's actually louder at the track level, even though we haven't inserted this effect in at the track level. Now that's going to change a number of things and we'll look at the different effects that these have in a moment. But one of the things with that signal being louder is me means that it's going to affect things like compressors and things that come after it, okay? So it's an important distinction between inserted effects and mix engine effects. And finally, before we move on, how can we know which of these tracks are being affected? Well, you can see just above the fader of each track where we see all of these little indicators here that there's a little red indicator on every single one of the tracks. If I change the color of my bus over here, let's change it to, I don't know, uh, yellow. You can see that that indicator is now yellow. So that little indicator is showing us that in some way this channel is being affected by a mix engine effect which is in added to the bus that this channel goes out to if that makes sense to you so i'm leaving the console shaper on that red drum bus that we were using earlier because it's great for demonstrating some of the main controls that we see in most of the mix engine effects those being drive noise and crosstalk let's start off with drive i'll switch it on now earlier we heard it just on the kick drum but let's have a listen to it on the whole kit and I'll gradually turn the drive up, okay? Now we could really hear a difference as I turned it all the way up full, yeah, it started to get really gritty and kind of broken up almost. But did you notice things didn't actually get louder. You may have expected them to with a drive control like this, but they didn't because all mix engine effects have automatic gain compensation built in. It's really handy because you can hear the effect of the saturation without it kind of messing up your existing mix. Now on some of the other mix engine effects, you'll get an option for where this automatic gain compensation occurs. So I'm gonna open up up CTC one here. I'll just switch on for a moment and you can see there's an option over here where it says gain compensation to have it happening at the channel level or the bus level. So if you have it switched on to channel, then that gain is going to be adjusted automatically with every single channel before it goes into the bus. Now, if you had something like a compressor on that bus, it would drastically change the, the levels that the bus was receiving from individual channels so would change the way the compressor was behaving so this is a really significant control if you have it switched to bus then the the compensation just happens at the bus level and it's really worth experimenting with this if you have the option because it makes a drastic difference to the overall sound okay so going back to console shaper the next control that we see we'll just turn this drive down the next control that we see is for noise and it is what you expect it to be. I'll just turn it up full and switch it on. Have a listen. So you may have had to turn the volume up a little bit there or listen really, really, really carefully. So basically it adds that kind of hissy noise that you uh, equate with 
with analog hardware okay so whether you like that or not is kind of up to you i tend to not have it on personally but it is there as an option if you want and finally i think one of the more significant controls which really helps us to get the feel of a, an old console is the crosstalk control so essentially what happens here is that when we have each individual track which is feeding into this normally you would expect if you solo the, those tracks you'll only hear that instrument but on the old consoles if tracks were next to each other you may get a little bit of bleed going from one track to another okay so let me demonstrate this i'll turn crosstalk on i'm just going to turn it up full so that you can really easily hear it and i'm going to solo that kick that we were listening to earlier now i'll just temporarily turn crosstalk off and have a listen to that kick and as you'd expect you can only hear the kick so we'll turn crosstalk on have a listen now Now you can hear a whole bunch of the snare there, probably because of crosstalk turned up so loud. But in other words, the snare is bleeding into the kick. Now, if we were soloing, say, just the snare here, and we'll have a quick listen to that, then we're going to get crosstalk from the kick and the hi hat because they are either side of the track. There, have a listen. So this actually makes a really nice difference to a mix. You wouldn't normally use it quite as extreme as I've got it there, but I definitely find that even up, you know, to 20 or 30% here before it becomes sort of really obvious, you can have a it can have a really nice effect on the overall mix. So definitely worth playing around with crosstalk. So as we discussed earlier, if a track is going into a bus which has a mix engine effect on it, we'll see that indicated on the track via the color of the bus that it's going to. In this case, it's going to that red color bus. So we've got a red indicator over here, okay? Now, what if we have another bus going into it? Well, we can see I've added this yellow bus here and its output is also going to that red bus. And we can see that indicated in a slightly different way on a bus with this little red indicator here. We'll get back to that in a moment. So what if I take a few of these drums, I'll take say the kick, and all of the toms here, and I'll set their output to that yellow bus, okay? Let's choose that one, it's called drum sub, okay? So they're all now going through to this yellow bus, which is in turn going through to the red bus. But if we take a look at all of those tracks, which I just fed through there, you can see the red indicator is now missing from them, indicating they're no longer being affected by the mix engine effects which were inserted on that red bus even though they eventually go through to them now we can change that by going to the mix engine effect and clicking on this button pass through okay and this is a way to enable tracks to inherit the mix engine effects from buses further up the line so i switch that on and you can now see that red indicator is back for all of those drums okay but what if i now add in a mix engine effect to this yellow bus are you following let's click on this and i'll choose say ctc1 and you can see that now we have that mix engine effect on let's take a look at the channels which fed through to it and you can now see their indicator has changed to yellow now they are still being affected because of the pass through function by the console shaper on the red bus here but we only have that yellow indicator but we can see on the yellow bus however we've now got two colors uh, a yellow one which is for this bus and a red one indicating that this goes out to another bus with a mix engine effect does that make sense to you i hope so now we can get some pretty interesting sort of effects or some complex things happening when we do this especially with things like crosstalk because we can get crosstalk in a couple of different ways if i turn crosstalk off which it already is on the one that we just added okay but i turn it on 
yeah, for the main one on the red channel, which remember they're all inheriting that at the moment. And I solo my kick. I'll just solo that, make sure the crosstalk is turned up. Let's have a listen. And as we heard earlier, we're getting a lot of crossover from the snare, okay? It's crossing over onto the kick because they're next to each other. What if I turn cross talk off on this one, but turn it on and turn up, by the way, on the yellow channel now, yeah? Let's have a listen now to that cross talk. Now we're getting crosstalk, not from the snare, but from the tom, okay? Why would we be getting it from the tom? Well, that's the next channel which is going through to that yellow bus. You can see that here. So they're in effect kind of next to each other as far as the plug-in is concerned, okay? So that's how the crosstalk is working there. And we can turn, cro turn crosstalk on for both of them if you want um, and have a listen to that. So it gets a little bit complex, but it's worth understanding it if you're gonna make use of these mix engine effects. Now finally, I would add your mix engine effects at the beginning of your main mixing process because they can affect the levels of the mix quite drastically and kind of undo the work that you already did. So I'd say that you should choose which one of them that you favor near the beginning of your mixing process, dial in some basic settings, and then mix into them, subtle changes with them, shouldn't affect your mix too much, but I would certainly get a basic setting before you begin. So before you go, I'd like to mention there's a brand new way to support this channel, apart from commenting, liking, and subscribing. If you click on the join button down below and become a member, you can help to make this channel and community much more sustainable for the future. Now the perks are mostly fun with badges and emojis and things, but there's also some useful things Things like getting early access to some videos. So before you watch one of these two videos, which I highly recommend, consider clicking on the join button down below. I'd appreciate it so much and I'll see you in the next video.